Hello and welcome to episode 109 of the Spare Change Challenge. One thing you might notice is the looks a little bit different today. That's because I went back to the original OBS broadcasting software and made some tweaks and basically tried to copy it as close as I could, but things were arranged differently just because it's two different types or two different software. Made by the same company, but it's two different programs. Um, so I did the best I could to get as close as I could. But I actually like the old software better. It, you're able to tweak settings a little bit easier. I think it's a little more user friendly. So hopefully the disconnect problems are gone. You know, first of all, hopefully the sound issue is now corrected and I'm not too quiet anymore. And three. I don't think there is a three. We'll just go with those two, right? As long as those two are fixed, we'll be happy. Let's tr see if we can get four tables up here. I literally just started playing. I haven't played but a couple hands here. I haven't been involved in a hand until now. There we go. Um, so let's try and see if we can get a fourth here. We do. We do get a fourth. I'm getting started a little bit late. Mainly because I was tweaking my, or getting my OBS set up. And also, one of my daughters has Girl Scouts today, so it conflicts, the pickup time conflicts with my 3 o'clock start time some days. So, yeah. Everybody let me know how the settings are, please. If it's too loud, too quiet, if it's disconnecting, if I should turn my webcam off because I look too ugly. I mean, just give me any reason here and <clears throat> I'll make changes for you. We'll just take care of that. I'm going to actually test my chat to make sure that's working. Looks like it is. Okay. Flag! It's a really odd line. But when somebody does this, <clears throat> they're typically strong. It's typically not a bluff. Um, I mean, I know I did not bet the flop. This is basically the flop here. But um, usually if, if somebody is bluffing here, it's a semi-bluff with like, I don't know, queen ten of spades. Um... Typically, it's pretty strong when somebody does this. Um, I'm going to fold my one pair hand. I mean, there, there's a small chance you're getting bluffed off the best hand there. But, I, I mean, with a one pair hand, it's basically... You really can't go wrong in a vacuum just taking a bet fold line. I think if he is going to bluff at the pot... He would be taking, he would be leading the turn most of the time, not not going for some fancy deck raise because if he wants his bluff to be profitable, he needs to probably think he can build it over two streets. So if I check back, he, he's taking a chance of me checking back the turn, and then he only gets one street to bluff, and it's just unlikely to work for one street for, versus over multiple streets. So that's another argument for just bet folding there on the turn. 
And we could be proven wrong. Um, he could turn out to be a really bluff happy person and we just don't know that yet. But we will adjust our read if necessary. I mean, actually, in all likelihood on that, um, that's another advantage of checking back that flop. I mean, I think if we bet the flop, we, he, he raises at that point, we've pretty much got to commit with top pair on that board, um, and we're probably crushed when he has a hand. Um, they can check raise that turn. And um, you may think it's the same setup as the flop, but it's really not. There's a turn card, and... Um, it's a turn. People just check raise turns regardless of the pot size lighter, I mean tighter on the turn and river than they do on the flop. There's just less... It's not that he has less hands in his range because his entire range is intact because I checked back. Just more of a... It might... I don't want to say it's psychology, but... Just... That's just the mentality. At least in today's game. And I don't know if that's... I don't know if that truism, if you want to call it that, is going to go anywhere. In the vast majority of people that play this game, even though there's an average, your average person's a little bit better than they were five years ago, ten years ago for sure, most people only take their learning so far. So, it's not like that's going to just change overnight. Maybe even not over 50 years, who knows? This looks like by far the best table right here. Three fish, minimum. Got one here. Not sure here. This one doesn't look that amazing. Gonna be a standard fold here in the vacuum. Without a read. Sure he's three bet one out of two now, chances, but that doesn't mean anything. It's a cutoff versus now if this was button versus cutoff, I would be shoving here. Um it's a little bit different situation. Just that one seat makes a huge difference. People tend to 3-bet light here. Like your vacuum 3-bet range for a player here might be something like 10-12% some players. Especially maybe this type. Uh, if he's shaping up to be the type of player I think he is. But this position here would be more like 5% and that makes this a fold. Maybe 6%. It's that drastic. Trust me. Basically if we, if we shove there we're just hoping he has ace-king. <laughs> That's that's the hope, and not Jack's plus. Um, I don't think we'll barrel this board. It's just unlikely he's going to fold to two bets, and I'm not really a fan of barreling off in that spot. And yeah, yeah, top pair, he's not going anywhere. <clears throat> Welcome to those just joining the stream here. Hopefully everything seems to be working. Kind of boring so far, huh? Had to fold a few times. I haven't really won any pots, have I? Maybe one down here. 
Yeah, some days are like this. I mean, you'll have whole hours like this where just nothing happens. But as long as you're steadily increasing <laughs> as you go, I guess, who cares if it's boring, right? You know, that's what poker is, right? Tons of boredom followed by moments of terror. Jack six suited, two different suits, but still Jack six suited on both tables. Pretty interesting. Odds of that happening at any given time are very slim, but that goes to show it's one outer. One outers happen. Probably less chance of that than a one outer happening, right? So, you know, when you lose quads over quads or straight flush or something, that's probably about the same. I could be completely wrong here, but two suits, maybe the same suit would be less frequent, or would it? I just don't know. But just jack six suited, jack six suited, ace king suited, ace king suited. Correct me if I'm wrong here, what's the percentage chance of that? Is it less than 1%? I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter, right? Just interesting to think about sometimes. I'm not sure this is the best table, although we do have this player. Which makes it a saving grace, maybe, even though he is to our direct left. In the old days, we probably would have left this table, but... Probably can leave this one, though, right? Nah, I'll stay. This guy's short. 25-0 so far. Makes it worth it, I think. I don't think this guy's stealing wide enough for sure yet, although he has the stats. Um, yeah, I could certainly call there sometimes. I think with 22 big blinds, I would prefer a shove or fold. With 30, I think it's a call, more likely. A little bit more room to, to work with. Pretty much if you float, float the flop and improve in any little way, you have to just commit at that point um, when you start that short. So. Where we get to shove pre-flop, maybe, was it, was it the first time? Well, he's free rolling. Nobody's free rolling. Let's chop it up. I'm not sure what he was waiting on there. Was if he was eating a ham sandwich? I don't know. A little bit of a slow roll. I had a guy slow roll me yesterday with kings. Was it yesterday? I think it was off stream. Maybe it was two days ago. I guess it doesn't matter. And I had kings as well. Um, so I had kings. I shoved. He must have tanked for a solid, as long as you can tank. I mean, his um, his timer timed all the way down. And, uh, he eventually called and had kings. And I, long story short, I, I made a flush <laughs> and took the whole pot. So that goes to show it, it doesn't pay to slow roll. This player type, I probably could think about shoving. Cut off versus button, but maybe not hijack versus button. That might be my minimum hand there for that situation. Ace queen for sure there. Maybe ace jack suited. I don't know. Could certainly shove this if necessary. Guy yeah, hasn't played a hand yet. Of course, it's only five hands. Party pooper. Have to keep an eye on this guy. Probably not, but there is some aggro maniac potential here. Usually when somebody raises in the blinds like that, you have to be wary of that. But it wasn't a spot really where I could just ship to that yet. If he was 
90, 80 or something. I could probably just shove that for value. But you got to be careful with that type of player too because other players might be trapping. Um, but I did have good relative position, so they would have sprung their trap long before it got back to me. So I'm just saying if he ISOs they fold, I could shove there pretty wide. And by the same token, I'm, I, would, I could possibly limp this in some spots, but I'm just going to give it up with this player behind. But it, it, the value of hand, stronger hands, um, middle strict hands, goes up in this dynamic here. Because I can limp, shove, or whatever. Yeah, this is definitely a good table. <laughs> Look at this, $20, $21 preflop. Pretty, pretty good. A non 3 bet pot, mind you. This guy just pots it. <laughs> I guess he's not folding. Basically made a bet that only a strong flush draw or a 7 or a... I guess a king could continue with. Um, This guy's 3 bet now. 3 out of 7. Um, Well, at least I get to see if he's bluffing, which I'm pretty sure he is most of the time. Okay, not this time. So we didn't have a decision here, luckily. Um, I was probably folding anyway. Um, wow. Okay, so he wins. Um, <laughs> that's pretty interesting, just stacks with nines there. And when this guy is going to be... I guess this guy doesn't have to be that strong. Because he could have a read on this guy as being um, a light 3 better and 4 bet lighter. But that's... So I guess I'm okay with the nines going in there, but... Seems kind of... Spewy in an anonymous game for 100 big blinds. I'm definitely not leaving this table. I think this guy might be a little bit weak. A little bit overly aggro, and we can, we can exploit that. If given the opportunity. So here's our situation where hopefully this guy ISOs us. If not, it's a limp pot. We have a disguised hand. We're probably going to see a three or four-way pot even if we open here. So um, we might as well see it for cheaper and make our decisions then. Obviously, this is a pretty miserable board. Even though we have the ace of hearts and two overs, I'm going to go ahead and fold this. It's not like we're going to get paid off if, if it goes heart-heart, right? I mean, it's possible, but I mean, you're you're hoping for a lot there for two for uh, the price you're getting. Hello, I hunker down. Good to see you again. Get a little flippage here, and we managed to hold. Nines are hot. Hit another set. Set was just happened up here a bit ago. I didn't see that what happened. Don't know. What do these guys have? Did the money go in? Looks like it did. So it was top pair versus a turned two pair. Cool. And player four had the two pair. 10-5 versus... Wow, this guy put it in on the turn on a 10 7 6 5 board with 10 9. Pretty interesting. There's no read here, so I'm going to fold. Um, unless I get like call call here. Same hand again, but this is not the button. I probably would think about shipping there. Of course, this guy did show nines. So maybe he's just picked up a whole bunch of strong hands in a row. I don't know. This looks like a tricky spot to play, and it can be if you bet the flop. But I think it gets a lot easier if you check back. People will play pretty straightforward on turns here. I don't know if I want to raise fold this. I think that my hand's a little bit too strong to raise fold. Um, it's kind of 
kind of an awkward spot if I get raised on this turn. Right? I guess there could be a couple of worse hands that would do that. Gonna stab at this. Probably have the best hand, I'd say, yeah, at least half the time here. Maybe 67, 65% or something. Against two random hands. Which they have random hands, basically. Maybe this guy's not quite random, but probably a, pretty close to it. Blah, blah, blah. Please win, ace, deuce. So, oh. <laughs> well, I mean, these guys are all... Whoa, I just realized. Could this be fish, 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 fish? I don't know about this guy. He's not necessarily a fish. He could just be an aggro guy playing a lot of pots to exploit the fish. Um, had a, a little bit stronger hand, I probably could flat here and trap. I don't really want to play a three or four way pot with tens there, though. The longer he takes, the more we want to call because it's probably like fives. I will be... do I min-raise or limp? These guys are so passive, I think I'll limp. I don't mind seeing a four-way. Yeah, this is like this is like a Vegas game here. <laughs> like a live casino game, uh, anyway. How passive and... Yeah, how loose everybody is. Why can't every table be like this? How much money would we make? So this is definitely a, um, I'd say this is a 25 big blind table win rate. Right here, a win rate table. If every table was like this, I would probably have a 25 big blind win rate easily. Anybody would. I mean, any ABC player would have that. It's basically wait till you have a strong hand and you're getting paid. Um... We're just trying to get value from one pair of hands here, or some kind of spade. Um, it's a really good board to get played back on, on the flop side. Trying to keep it down to two streets here. It'll look a little bit fishy that I didn't see bet here, so he may be less likely to continue anyway. But it's not really that like I'm going to get a huge amount of value out of a hand like that ever. Unless he's got a ton of equity. Not like the type of it's not the type of board you just want to bet and just pile it in. <laughs> I was check calling, uh, probably just deciding based on bet size and timing. And I got fishy stats myself. Twenty one four. Been trapped on these tables. I think I haven't. I've been on these tables since the beginning, right? 
This is the only one that I've left the table yet. This one I'm not leaving, but this one's not great. This one's not great. It's like all the fish are on this table, and there's like none here, none here. It's fine by me. It's like I got them all to myself. See, this is where the, the value, the value of this hand goes up so dramatically in this spot. Unless this one of these guys gets like really aggressive. Um, if there's a three bet from one of these passive players. <sighs> Even a raise from one of these players, nines kind of shrinks. Because <laughs> these guys, I, I guess, are probably only raising like the super premium hands. Or their favorite hand, whichever. Make them first. Nines might be the hand of the day. So I'm just thinking I need to use up my poker points by the end of the month. I hope I don't forget that. We're going to wait till about maybe the last, maybe we'll wait till f this weekend, next weekend. And maybe like on Friday or Saturday night, I'll either play some triple ups with the points, or if I'm feeling frisky, play tournaments. Probably better off playing the um, triple ups. I think I'll probably be flatting this button. This guy just said, nice, got you a dollar. <laughs> no, I got one, two, three, four dollar. <laughs> yeah, I got to be careful with this hand because this guy does have an extremely tight range. It's not like I want to just pile it in with queen here or a jack. Um, I certainly will be continuing probably at least one street. But I actually am probably behind this guy's range. Um, especially when he pots it here. I mean, I would think Ace-King suited would be the worst hand I would see here. You guys are going to think I'm absolutely freaking crazy here, but I'm pretty sure this is a fold. Hopefully it goes to the showdown and I can be shown. I, I can be shown. This guy's just got kings every time here. Or kings or aces. Or perhaps ace queen, or he could have like ace king or whatever. Um, I make two pair. Eh, good chance I have the best hand now, but I wouldn't have known that. Um, and I, I may look like an idiot here if it shows down and I was beat, not beat. Um, so this guy had the nuts and decided not to bet the river. Um, kind of odd. Well, look, we can see what player three had here. Maybe a scared a, a kings or something. Um, hold on one second. This guy's pretty aggro. Yeah, I could put this in. Oh well, okay. Unlucky us, huh? Okay, I'd like the tip top of Yost of his range. Oh well. Must be nice to 3 bet 4 out of 12 hands and then blind versus blind get ace king versus my ace jack. Um. Well, now I have Ace Nine on the button. Um. Man, this kind of sucks, but I think this is a shove. I mean, whatever. Okay, so we're ahead this time. Ouch. Okay, so behind and ahead. Um, what are you gonna do? I mean. The hands play themselves, right? Nothing I can do about either of those. This guy probably thought he had a value hand with the ace, the king, queen. I guess if I had king jack suited, he might have. That probably would be the bottom of my range to continue there. Um, so the player three up here had um, pocket kings. So. Yeah, I was second best there. By the river. Um, kind of dry. But I think with top pair and a three-way, I have to bet. I have to protect my hand. Um, probably have to stack. I don't know. Wow, two callers. Okay. So I imagine their range is like 5x, um, pocket 7s, weak 10s. 
three way. I mean, I guess there's certainly some deuces in their range, like ace deuce, something like that. I think checking back here might be the play. Um, and just playing a river. And certainly we'll just probably be calling a river bet. Just depends on what the action is. Wow, the over bet. I highly doubt he's bluffing into two players. There's really not much he could be bluffing with. Um, I just imagine he had a deuce, probably. I think if he's going to bluff, he would just pot it or something. Or like bet $10. Um, we very well could be showing a bluff, but if he's got a bluff, what is it? What would be a bluff here? 3 4? Um, I mean, what else is there? Ace. I mean, I'm not going to call, but um, we could get shown a bluff there sometimes because it could be a fish that just is a crazy bluffer like that, but pretty sure that's a deuce a lot there. Or so like a flop set or something that turned into a boat. I'm not really going to worry about that. Heads up, it's a little bit of a different matter there. I could probably call sometimes there. Wow. Same hand, right? Almost same situation. Um, it's a little bit big. I think I still have to call with the queen-jack suited in a, in a multi-way, possible five-way pot. Yeah, I think, I think it's standard. A little bit um, spewy here. Well, I'm, I'm losing the king-nine, and I'm losing to ace-king here. Jacks, tens, queens. 8-9. Wow. How likely is it one of them has? I think I'm, I'm just committed here. I can definitely get called by worse, I think. Um, yeah. I just have to shove. <laughs> I just have to shove. Can't flop top two even on this board and just check back and give them free cards. Hey, it would suck for like... Uh, I don't know. What could come on the turn? Scare my action off and also um, make me have to fold, which I don't want to do with top two pair. Okay. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh God, we were so far ahead. So funny. The nine comes. Wow. Got to give this guy some chance to bluff or improve here. He's only got twelve dollars. Um, we're hoping he has a king or something. Um, yeah. So I mean, what are you gonna do? It's a limp pot, blind versus blind. Um, oh, he, he had his ten covered. Uh, I'll see what our equity was. But what, what what was with his call there? I mean, he all he had was bottom pair and an open ender. Um, and it was a dirty opener. Just shows how great of a table this is. You should be snap folding that, really. We don't have a read here, so we're going to fold. But we'll run the equity here just to see. I'm guessing, what did he have, to 25 or 30% at max? And diamonds, king hearts is what he had. Um, we can defend that. Fold that, fold that. And he had queen, I had queen jack of spades. Um, go for one street now. Fortunately, he probably had like pocket fives there. We had queen clubs, pack of hearts, ten of hearts on the
I'll be shoving if this guy three bets. Wow, maybe not. Okay, I think I have to fold this now. I only have three three invested here. I'll go for some value on this river. This guy alone I would be shoving, but hold on, is there just too much money for me to fold here? Even if I knew my ace was my only out, or my 10 was my only out, do I have to just put it in here? Super high variance. Because there's 10, 20, 30 already out there. And I have 20 behind. I think I have to put it in. I think I have enough equity in a four-way in this spot. Especially if it can do this, where he shoves and isos. These guys aren't going to fold, though. They're too short. So, whatever happens, I think mathematically it was okay. Especially if one of them folds. Wow, that's not a very good spot for us. Both having ace-10. Um, um, with the exact holdings, this guy is just card rack with, and he's three betting 40-something percent. But I'm not going to second guess that. Um, I'm going to even run the equity with those two hands just to see what it was. Three way. Um, this guy's probably normally aggro three better, but he just happens to be hitting a bunch of cards too. Unfortunate. Um, I, I don't know. I may need to run that in Krev to see, see what that looks like. But back to the other hand, I had 75% um, equity, so. Um, yeah, so let's just ship at this. Hopefully this is a little bit of positive tilt on his part. Yeah, it is. Wow. Really? I'm gonna give him the diamond draw. Okay, so we get one of our buy-ins back. So I feel pretty good about losing only down two buy-ins on that table. Um, this this is called um, it's a type of tilt. This guy is just winning everything, so now he feels invincible. So he's just going to put it in with seven eight. Um, so it's still a form of tilt. This guy is like this is like a primo spot right here. I'm not going to risk two buy-ins here though. After I'm already down two buy-ins on this table, I'm going to just leave. I hesitate too though. So let's run the two ace tens versus um, king queen. Let's try this. Maybe we get back on the same table again. I don't know. Don't know if that. I don't think it is. I don't think we can get on the same table. Maybe too many tables available right now. But didn't that guy have like two eighty six? I don't like the looks of that table, so let's pick another random table. I don't like the looks of either of these tables. Maybe we can do this. Leave this one. This one quickly. Get off, get off, get off. Try that one. Why does this... I... Crap. Um, we'll just roll with this one. Okay, so let's do the two ace tens. <laughs> um, so let's do kings first. 10, ace 10. <laughs> so we each had 13% um, equity <laughs> versus the kings. Now, knowing the exact spot, it was obviously we didn't have the right price. But if we put a range in, if that guy's doing it with ace 10, he's probably doing it like ace 9, king queen, king jack. Um, variety of hands, ace-jack, ace-queen, um, whatever, right? 
whole variety of hands. Um, I would be doing it probably similar range, but maybe add in more pairs. Yeah, I mean, now that I think about it, we have to do. We have to get rid of kings too, because he's gonna have more than kings there. He's got a freaking wide range. So I'm putting in his wide range too. Um. So yeah, I had forty percent equity against this player's range, um, most likely, and being, I probably only needed. 22% equity there to make that a profitable sh shove if one person other person is calling So we kind of ran in a worst case scenario though, but I still am comfortable with putting it in with ace 10 We only had 22 big blinds behind right? Um, it just feels gross when you run into that hand. <laughs> it's basically set over set Or not set over set, but um running into Needing a two outer let's put it that way just needing to make a set this guy had my freaking outs So yeah, I mean, I think 20% one of us either wins or we chop in that spot. And I only, actually when you think about it, and we only needed like 22, because it was a 4, there's a lot of money out there. There's a 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, 40. Actually, when my money goes in, it's 30, 60, 90. No, 20. All right, I have to think about that. 25, 50, 75, plus the dead 10. So there's 85 out there, and I invested 25. So I'm getting 3 to 1 on my money. So, yeah, it's probably somewhere in the mid-20s that I had to have there after investing 3. Anyway, long story short, it can't be that bad. <laughs> I mean, I think you can fold, too. I don't think it's terrible to fold. I just think it, you're probably going to show a profit by putting it in there. Maybe a small profit. But we can't play on scared money, right? That's why we have so many buy-ins for the stake. Or twenty, huh? What's he trying to say with that? Huh? Damn, if this was a little less, this is a call here because you got this player. Arg. Yet. <laughs> but he might ship too, so. No reads. So we have ran better before <laughs> than this session so far. It's good to see those hands. Look at this three six of spades on two tables. This is kind of eerie today. There's been at least three times now that I've had almost exactly the same, or I have had exactly the same hand, and it, that was even the same exact suit. Not just suited, suited. That is freaky. Probably get off this table. I don't know why I'm hanging out here. Yeah, I hunkered down. What it Basically what I mean by that is... um. When before when you wanted to choose a table, you had to click next. Uh, you had, for, had to first click your stake, your buy-in level, which that would eventually save itself. The part that didn't save itself is there. Well, actually, I take that back. All right, so let me just do this. The first screen is either no limit hold'em and then your table size, like six max, nine max. Then the next screen is your stake and your buy-in. Well, before you had to choose the stake every time, you had to go through a drop down. Um, now they've eliminated that and they've just preset it to whatever you did last time. So now you basically have to do two clicks to get on a new table instead of four. 
I think. Anyway, yeah, it's just a lot quicker and less clicks. That's it. Hope I explained that properly. Is this the same table? Probably. Oh, wait a minute. This is that same table. Leave this table too. Hmm, we'll give it a try, whatever. Obviously we're bet folding turns. Even though it's three-way, I'm going to bet again. Somebody floated with an ace, they floated with an ace. And check this side here. Hands that he could be betting for value are like, wow, really? Is that the same guy that shoved earlier? But he's so passive, I don't think I can... I, I could definitely see this being like ace, x of clubs, and he's shoving now. I mean, we could find out that this guy just every time he misses a draw or something, he does this. Um, I just we just haven't seen a showdown to be shown that. I'm just not in the habit of calling river shoves from one aggression factor players. It's pretty frustrating though, because I think I would be calling pretty wide there. Could that be the only time he's bed? Is those two rivers? <laughs> oh, I didn't want to call there. I misread my hand. Misread my hand. <laughs> great, great. I guess the only thing raising here is a ten, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, we're just gonna get raised here every time, aren't we? It's just a setup. <laughs> oh, we sh we weren't even supposed to be in this hand. We weren't even supposed to be in this hand. And he gives us trips on the turn. At the same time, somebody else has trips. That's pretty frustrating. I mean, it's not like we can check fold the turn, though. I mean, there are worst hands that'll call call, like ace high or something. Um, that's pretty frustrating. Is this guy wide enough? Three out of five. Um... I think this guy is just wide enough for us to do this on the button with only 12 big blinds. Cool, thanks for letting me know that. 
Um, I hunker down says the stream seems to be working good, so thanks for the info on that. Oh, slow roll city here. Give us a four in punishing. Thank, oh, not a four. A deuce, I called for the wrong card. No, I thought a four was a straight. But at least there's only 12 big blinds if you're going to run into that hand. That's kind of frustrating, though. I mean, we wouldn't have been that short if he doesn't get trip over trip in a hand we weren't even supposed to be in. Then I just fold the ace five on that hand, so... That's like... <laughs> that's like bad beat, bad beat. There. I don't know why I thought I had pocket deuces there. It's eight deuce, not pocket deuces. Sometimes I'll see a hand out of the corner of my eye and I'll go ahead and call, and then as I get there, I realize that the corner of my eye is pretty bad for reading cards. That was the case there, so. I mean, it's just like a misclick. That's just something that's going to happen every once in a while. You misread and then snap do something you're not supposed to. It's frustrating that it couldn't be like a 10 10 3 flop and I'm just out of the hand, right? So we got about 10 minutes left. Not much has gone well this session, has it? One of those days. So far, we could turn that around pretty quickly here. And certainly we have the fish available to do it. The guy's opening pretty wide, but I don't think I can call with Jack 8 in this spot. Blinds in a multi way, maybe? I don't know. This calling range is going to flop pretty well on that board. Mostly includes middle pairs and such. Pocket tens would be pretty sick here, wouldn't it? Pretty sure this guy has to have jacks plus, right? Wow. Seven deuce, so we see a bluff. Pretty sick, pretty sick bluff. Not really repping anything there. I mean, the only thing he's repping there is pocket fours or pocket tens. So if this guy has like jacks plus, he can't fold there. You're repping such a narrow range. He has zero fives in his range. I guess being 7130 when he could have an ace five or something, but it's highly unlikely in a three bet pot. And then exactly have it come 5-5-4. Five, five, so maybe this guy just had ace-king. I don't know. Welcome to those just joining the stream. And we set up a decent slight over bet shove on this turn. We'll sometimes have the best hand here. We're chopping. Pretty interesting dynamic going on with these players.
Yeah, this is a other crap table. Hmm, a little iffy here, but... Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. I hunker down says, at least it's short stacks and not full stacks. Well, that's part of it, part of the point. Part of the argument for doing this. Which when you run like complete ass, <laughs> you don't lose like, I don't know, a boat boatload of money really quick. Peachy. A little iffy here, but we do have a fish in the big blind, so I think it makes it okay. Wow. My kingdom for a set. Wow, this guy's stolen five out of five. I might be able to shove here. Yeah, I think he's isoing super wide here. Yeah, I think. Man, seems high variance, doesn't it? I think that's a shove here, but am I going to up in like a four way? It's not plus EV to call, but I think, oh, it feels gross, but I think it's okay. <laughs> kind of funny. But this guy's six of six steel, so I'm assuming he's isoing extremely wide. Wow. That's so frustrating. Such a good spot. Another great spot. And I just run into the top of a range again. Wow. That is freaking frustrating. Um, so how do we play the queens? Open shove to show we're on tilt? Yeah, I think it's fine. We're gonna get called wide. Um, I think this is one of the few cases you can do this, just because of how wide we're gonna get called here. Um, if I hadn't lost that hand previous, I would just be 4xing it or something. Okay. So we hold and get a little bit of our lost dough back. <laughs> it's funny this guy had ace king. I mean, freaking card rack, man. Yeah, we're we're only down two buy-ins again, so we've ran really bad on two tables today, and we've managed to get a buy-in back and only be down two buy-ins on both tables. So that's a that's a small victory, right? I think this is the same table. Not sure. I think it is, because that looks like the same stack size right here. So I think we have a read. Fish, 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 fish. Right? Um, yeah, I might be on tilt. So hitting any kind of piece of this board would be lucrative for us. Kind of been a card wreck, though, hasn't he? I think it's just standard here. Yeah, we're finding another table here. This is that same reg table we've been keep getting stuck on. 
All right, so it's uh, time to end the stream. Um, I think, is it an hour? Yeah, it's an hour. So let me know in the comments whether everything seems to be okay in the stream, um, the video, whether it, the audio is good, you know, all that good stuff. Please uh, leave a comment below. So thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow.